What's going on guys, Austin Zayback here with another episode of the Austin Zayback Show. And on today's episode, we have a very special guest by the name of Josh Snow. And I actually had the opportunity of interviewing you, Josh, uh, probably a couple of years ago now on a different podcast. And it's crazy to see even in the last couple of years what you've done. And I just am extremely excited to jump right into this one. Guys, if you're brand new to the channel, this guy, if you've never heard of Josh Snow, you've probably heard of one of his companies by the name of Snow Teeth Whitening. You go by Josh Snow, obviously makes a ton of sense, but he's actually a serial entrepreneur. And between all of his companies, I think you were saying you're upwards of $250 million a year in total gross revenue, which is just absolutely insane. Are you even 30 years old yet? I turned, tw I turned 29 last month. Okay, 29 years old. So he is a young gun just killing the game. Uh, guys, if you're brand new to the channel, make sure to smash the like button or whatever platform you're on. Drop a review down below um, at the end of the show if you get some value. So Josh, I just appreciate you being here, man. I know you're just a a extraordinarily busy, but uh, I'm excited to sit down and just pick your brain a little bit. Of course, brother. It's a pleasure to be here, and it's, it's good seeing you new digs, and I'm happy to, to catch up. Yeah, yeah, I'm, and I and I loved. I actually went back this morning and re-listened to our old episode. Um, it was me and the other Austin at that time, and you and me and the other Austin still have a good relationship. And and he's a good guy. Obviously, we went a different direction in business, but uh, but no, it's cool, man. So I think we uh, we actually interviewed, I believe, in 2019. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. And I think at that time I was looking at some different press and stuff back then. I think you had done you just surpassed 100 million in sales. I want to say in snow teeth whitening. Does that sound sounds about right? Sound about right? Yeah, give or take. Right. Okay. So since then, obviously, you've skyrocketed. We were talking a little bit before the show, and you were saying that revenues, you know, doubling, um, you know, doubled. I believe in the year 2020 and 2021. Yes. Okay. Which is just incredible. It's it's almost unheard of. I mean, what what all have you done? So first of all, I guess we'll backtrack a little bit. How long have you owned? When did you found Snow Teeth Whitening? So Snow, the idea. I originally had the idea maybe. Seven, seven and a half years ago. Uh, I shared the idea with um, one of my business partners at the time um, and I didn't get a, a huge response mm -hmm. from him and so that's why I didn't kind of go into, not his fault, it just we had a lot of ideas we were looking at and Snow was one of those that was just definitely a little bit more of a reach. Mm -hmm. um, it also was a little bit more in my court than it was in his. So, you know, I kind of put it on ice for about a year and a half then I had jaw surgery in yeah. that time and that's when, uh, this was about five and a half, six years ago, um, when I was having jaw surgery, did some more research, uh, and I was looking for a very, very challenging but uh, scalable space yeah. to hang my hat in. And before I started Snow, I'd built and sold. I made my first million at 17, so I'd been you know, moving and grooving, and I was really looking for something uh, big, something yep. that just had a lot of impact. And uh, oral care, I, I realized that I you know, struggled with my teeth and my jaw and all of these issues my whole life. And I'd been whitening my teeth since I was 13 years old, uh, maybe before that. And so I had a lot of experience with sensitivity with my teeth, whitening and the importance of smile. And you know, I kind of added that together and realized you know, a lot of people have teeth. This is a market that's big, grows with population growth. It's also very difficult, almost impossible to break into because there are only a few companies that dominate um, what is the number one sold retail product, which is toothpaste. Right. So it's a big, big opportunity, but very difficult to break into. And the timing um, when I decided to launch Snow was when influencer marketing was really starting mm -hmm. to take off on the Instagram side of things and when algorithmic reach organically was still really high, all that stuff. and so. I said, okay, this, this is an opportunity for me to combine my experience in selling hundreds of millions of dollars of skincare, cosmetics, mm. kind of the beauty side of things, uh, and then uh, combining that with oral care, which you know, is heavily commoditized um, and, and not necessarily looked at the same way that beauty products yeah. are. And so I wanted to combine that and create a product, and I found that teeth whitening was going to be the most sensible area to enter the category. Um, because I'm not a dentist, uh, we worked with several dentists in the beginning, but I wanted something that was that hit that cosmetic but oral care angle, mm -hmm. and whitening just had that mix for us. So we started as Snow Teeth Whitening. Uh, it was just me, and that was about uh, now about six years ago, wow. five, six years ago. That's incredible. So at 17, you had made your first million. Was that in the, the hot, you said you did like skincare, all those different things, or was that in a different industry entirely? I started making websites at 
13. Okay. Uh, then I started making websites for other people shortly after that. So that was kind of like my agency. Uh, and then I kept making websites for myself. And then I used Google AdSense for the ads. Then I figured out affiliate marketing. Mm. I go, oh, this is better. I get paid $40 if I drive a sale versus 10 cents a click. So I started creating more and more websites, yeah. growing, growing, growing. And it was the, I made my first million from affiliate marketing. So selling other people's products. But then that's when I was, you know, uh, 17, still super young. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, I wanna, I wanna create products. Mm -hmm. I wanna, f I wanna be the one looking for affiliates sure. and helping the affiliates earn more selling my products. And so <clears throat> I was running my agency at the time. And so my first million was made by selling other people's mm -hmm. uh, uh, products. But with Snow, for example, uh, we bootstrapped the first yeah. hundred million. So right. that was zero outside funding. Um, and we bootstrapped it all the way to 100 million, wow. our first 100 million. Yeah, well, and you nailed the marketing and the branding and the packaging and obviously the influence of marketing, right? I mean, I remember, um, and you guys probably still do it, but the Floyd Mayweathers, I mean, all right. of the big celebrities that you see, you know, you, you crushed it. And I think I remember you talking um, previously about that marketing strategy and, and, and how it was just kind of just all at once, just get out there, get in everybody's face. And, and again, backed by big names, you know, names of people that, again, perception's reality, right? I mean, people, people see, you know, the big celebrities that they follow, they already like, trust and respect the celebrity. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing back to back to back promotions, you know, or, or I guess, you know, endorsements, you could say, of a particular product. And, and naturally, you're, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, that's just one piece of how you scaled so big, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, influencer marketing, it's powerful. You, there's, there has never been an opportunity with social media, as we know, for someone to be able to share a message and millions of people to see it and act upon it in you know, minutes. And so that's word of mouth marketing. So word of mouth, you ask any business uh, owner and you say, what's your best source of traffic, uh, of, of sales? Word of mouth, referrals, yeah. we pay zero dollars mm -hmm. for them. That's great, but how do you scale that, yeah. right? And so that's where influencer marketing to your point, people buy from who they like or trust, and so when you're creating a brand, especially in a quote-unquote boring space like oral yeah. care, you know when you're creating innovation inside of a space like that, how do you build the buzz around mm -hmm. it? You know, Dyson with the vacuum cleaner, yeah. and so that's where we realized, okay, you know, everybody has teeth, but there are segments of the market that have influencers that might pique the interest of yeah. what we're doing, and that's where early on I brought Rob Gronkowski on and Chuck Liddell on which aren't necessarily beauty consumer centric sure. kind of influencers, but they were kind of who stepped up in the very beginning. And soon after that, you know, we lay, we've layered on hundreds of celebrities, mm. uh, A-list celebrities, top celebrities, all the shows. And that is, to, that is one piece, a very important piece in terms of building the brand equity of the yep. brand, the, the enterprise value, the market positioning, so that we can command the premium that we command because people know that we deliver premium products, premium experience, yeah. premium, all of that, premium results. So you have to build that. And the result of that today is that um, Snow is the most followed uh, uh, brand in our industry, yeah. millions of followers. We have millions of customers on our list. Uh, our reach is phenomenal and our data set is phenomenal. And so the result of it is that we were able to take what is quote unquote a boring product, a boring category, yep build some life into it through the product innovation and then highlight that through some of those influencers. Yeah. But, and now today our, our business is, is really held up by you know, our millions of fans yeah. that are posting and our 10,000 plus before after transformation yeah. photos. And so now that web continues mm -hmm. to grow and grow. And we still have you know, celebrities who will post here and here. We were on the Allen show multiple times uh, last month. So, there's still a lot of big things that we're layering yeah. in, but it's like a snowball, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it does get uh, a little bit easier as you do it. Right. It's just very difficult getting that going. And you don't need a huge celebrity to make your brand successful. A celebrity brand, a celebrity simply brings, or an influencer brings more attention mm. to what you're doing. Yeah. So if you only have one product and you have a Kardashian post, instead of having 10 products, yep. the guy with 10 products is gonna beat the girl with one product sure. and vice versa. And so. You have to make sure, because I talked to a lot of business owners, like, if I just had so-and-so yeah. post, that'll change my business. What people don't understand is that I'm influencer marketing behind the camera. Yeah. I'm taking that piece and I'm sending that to our retail partners. I'm sending that to our investors. Yeah. I'm sending that to potential partners that we want to work with. 
I'm doing my own influencer yeah. marketing to gain, um, to drive the value through that piece yeah. versus relying on Instagram to show it to enough people to use the coupon code yeah. and then I go, wait, that's not working. Uh, influencer marketing has evolved and in terms of the paid side of things, we focus more on the 900 million Instagram followers who aren't you know, a big influencer, sure. but who carry influence to the people who follow them. Yep. And when you have thousands of those micro influencers right. posting about your brand on a daily basis, and they each have, let's say, 2,000 followers yep. each, you're talking about two million people you're yep. reaching on a daily basis uh, pretty effectively. So that's where, that's where I urge business owners today to focus is on scaling yep. the micro influencer side versus trying to score that huge big sure. deal. That should be something happening in the background and you should have rationale for bringing yep. a celebrity's attention like that. Yeah. yeah, you're working on both of them simultaneously, right? As mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, a lot of people, I think they're, they're waiting for that perfect opportunity, the perfect person, the perfect whatever it might be. And you're saying, hey, yeah, start working on that and start, you know, uh, uh, pro, you know, basically massaging those relationships. But at the same time, simultaneously start with what you have, with where you're at, with the people that you can get access to day one, right? As opposed to waiting for this, you know, perfect moment in, in time. And when, so, you know, the time you were 22 or 23 years old, if I'm doing the math right, when you're kind of, you know, you get your jaw surgery, you're, you're getting to the point where you're about to start snow, um, you know, how, how much of, you know, obviously you're extremely talented, right? And you were way ahead of your age at 13, at 17, and, and so on and so forth. But how much of what it is that you know today in terms of marketing and branding and, and everything you just talked about, did you anticipate on implementing at that time at 22 or 23 when you were just launching Snow? I mean, how, how much of the wisdom did you obtain over time compared to like, you know, when you were starting? I mean, did you have this elaborate business plan or was it more of, um, you know, you were, you obviously yeah. you were intelligent, you knew what you were doing, but I mean, what did that look and feel like in the beginning stages of, of Snow? It's tough because, uh uh, I think it was Gandhi that said, you know, first they ignore you, uh, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. Mm. And people that are starting businesses out of ego will switch a lot because if they're not getting enough attention early on in the mm. business, it's not driving their significance, what they're seeking mm. from the business, versus what a business should be in business for, which is to um, make money. Yep. Uh, it's to produce value in the, in the form of money, jobs in the form of money, yep. all of that. And so. In the beginning, all I knew was that, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a bunch of projects going on at once and they were successful and they didn't require a lot of my time, but I needed something that, I needed to prove something to myself, I mm -hmm. think, I, initially. Very quickly, snow became more about myself. It kind mm -hmm. of, it's its own thing now, especially now. Um, but in the beginning, I wanted to see, I wanted to see if I could, if I could throw some pebbles at the, win at the window, at the castle, mm. and see if someone had come to the, w to the window. Yep. And that was the initial start. I created the first version of the website. I created the first uh, uh, version of the product. Um, I was working with suppliers, working with our dental team. Uh, my dental team, it was me. Uh, printing labels, yep. all of that stuff. Even as a very successful entrepreneur, starting in the spare bedroom of my house, because I didn't know where I wanted mm. to take it initially. I just knew there was a huge opportunity here. It matches, I feel like, my skill set. I'm interested in it. I'm not a dentist, but I love the market and, and I understand as a consumer. And so I just wanted to see sure. what would happen. So the initial part, it wasn't this, you know, what Snow is today, yeah. this platform of premium oral care brands, you know, shipping to 180 countries. In the very beginning, it was me, a Shopify site, yeah. my initial prototype, uh, initial ads, mm -hmm and a credit card attached to it, just like the old days. Yep. And I started running it because I just, I didn't want the echo chamber to disrupt any of the potential progress that could happen by me incubating it and insulating it myself. Essentially, I wanted to see what it could do without, before I showed it to anybody. Sure. And so I saw pretty quickly that there was an appetite for products like this. Mm and that um, the messaging that I was crafting was catching a lot of attention. Mm. And so that's when I said, okay, there's something here. And that's when I started to imagine an, an oral care platform that not just included snow, we just launched our kids care line mm. a couple months ago, Frost, at Frost on Instagram. So that's when I started to imagine the oral care aisle. Mm. And what would that product look like if snow came out with it? What would that product look yeah. like? 
just like I had that same thought process as a, an Apple fan mm -hmm. where I'd be like, what if Apple made a flat screen TV? Yep. What if Apple made a car? What would that look like? So I started to go through that process and I started to get really excited. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, you know what? I wanna make some of these things, one, for myself, because I think they'd be cool, but two, there's, there's a lack, in my opinion, of innovation mm -hmm. compared to other categories for something that man, women, child, all around the world brush your teeth every yeah. day. And I just felt like it was lacking. So in the beginning, it was just, I have an itch. Yep. I'm going to do all of the work myself as best as I can. And I'm going to drive revenue, mm. sales. And once I'm driving sales, I'll be able to attract more people. Yep. But in the beginning, it wasn't that big, big mission. It became a bigger and bigger vision yep. as we gained more and more traction. And then now that we've gained the confidence five years later, it's like, okay, where does snow go yep. next? And right. it's a whole different conversation. But in the beginning, it's like, I've got this cup. Yep. I want to sell it. Whoa, it's selling. People are liking it. I need to make some yep. more. I need help selling it. <laughs> it was still that same process. Sure. It, was, it sure. was still that same thing from the very beginning. Yep. And there's, there are many ways to do it. I could have recruited a team. I could have put a big budget in place. I just wanted to see what I yep. could do yep. just because it was sitting on my mind. And very quickly, I realized, whoa, this could be something bigger. If I put more focus into this, this could really become something. And we've now had over 50 million unique shoppers. Wow. And from the beginning, it was just the first few sales coming in. And I picked up the phone and called every single one yeah. of those customers because I wanted to understand, th those are my investors. I wanna understand why, mm. what are they looking for? What do they like? What would you like more? And I started asking them, what would you like us to do next? Yeah. And that created what is now a monstrous product development pipeline um, based off of feedback from our millions of fans. For sure, that's incredible. I love to hear every part of it, and every time you talk, I, just, I have a million questions, you know, because I think it's just, it's, it's honestly, I'm very curious, but I think it's just truly incredible what you've done. Um, you know, and, and just in general, I think like, when you look at it, there's a huge difference between an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur that is passionate and really like, you said in a podcast that I interviewed you on last time at the very end, you said you wanted to, you were chasing difficulty. And, and then I, I kind of connected the dots and you know, when you had the jaw surgery and things of that nature, like you wanted a massive project. Like you, you know, you, you said at one point that you got pretty good at building the one to $10 million a year companies, but you, you know, that to you was just, you could kind of go into really any, probably at that point, you know, theoretically, any industry and, and build a one to $10 million company, right? And you wanted a behemoth of a project. You wanted to really take on something that would even challenge you. And I think that goes to show like, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, when you look at social media and the way that the world is today, a lot of entrepreneurs, first of all, a lot of entrepreneurs I don't think should be entrepreneurs. That's another conversation. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, they're not passionate. They're just trying to make a buck. And I think when I listen to you talk and I, I you know, I'd imagine that a lot of your success has come strictly from the fact that, um, you know, yeah, making a buck was a byproduct, but you already knew that a long time ago. It's, it's, we, it's a capitalistic uh, economy, right? We obviously, if you provide value to the marketplace, you're going to make a buck. It's a byproduct, right? But you were passionate about the behemoth project you were taking on. And so for you, it was the passion that drove because it's the details, right? I called every customer. You know, I I I, put, I did every ver every vertical of the business. I I built from the ground up before I delegated, right? And mm -hmm. and you, that passion, I think, is what allowed you from from you know me looking in. Um, you know, one of the big reasons probably that you became so successful in in that particular in every regard, right? Um, you know, again, so many entrepreneurs. Would you? And I'd love to get your feedback. But you know, do you think that a lot of entrepreneurs out there, if they were just genuinely passionate about the end game, the end goal, that they would actually stick with it and, and, and see it through. I mean, so many don't, you know? The problem, I think, is virtue signaling. Um, it's, it's popular, see, 40 or 50 years ago, you tell someone, why are you starting this business? Because a lot of customers want it and the margins are great mm. and it's going to create generational wealth for me and my family. Mm. Wow, amazing, American dream. Now it's like, well, I want to save the pets and I want to give back to here and I want to do this and I want to do this because people say what they think people want to hear mm. and it's just survivorship bias. It's survival. Yeah. It's primal. But uh, we want to be liked. We yeah. want to be liked because it means um, in our primal being that we're more likely to survive mm. and we're going to get fed and we're going to get access to resources and mating abilities and all of that. So when you think about that and you think about 
especially youth, young entrepreneurship, um, there's a lot of virtue signaling. So on one side you have Instagram that glorifies the lifestyle. Mm. So you gotta show some of that in order to fit in, in mm. terms of being successful. Where, you know, in reality, that's just part of it. I realized, you know, 4,000 a month, I can drive any car I want in the yeah. world. Uh, you know, 10,000 a month, I can live pretty much anywhere I want in the yeah. world. Uh, you know, 5,000 a month, I can eat anywhere I want in the world and order anything I want. Um, you know, it's not, it's like, you know, between two, three to $500,000 yeah. a year in Arizona of, of income and you are top, top, top yep. 1%. It's like sure. the best of the best. So a lot of people haven't made enough money, and this is to put it bluntly, some people haven't made enough money to stop thinking about money. Mm. That's one thing, because if you're thinking of dessert, 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 no matter what I tell you, but look at this, look at this. You're like, I know, but the dessert that I saw on right. Instagram, I need that now. And that's where the signals get confused. Uh, on one side, the truth is, if people were more honest with themselves and with the people around them, they'd get what they actually want mm. much faster and they would have to do much less work. Yep. I've learned that being very direct and sometimes I have to call out awkward elephants, mm. it's simply because I have 24 hours in a day, I'm very happy, I love my life, so if I'm spending time, I wanna know what do you want, what's, what's the goal here? Yep. So to your point, I think that uh, you know, look, I, when I got started, I wanted, um, you know, I wanted the Lambos and Ferraris. I wanted the big house on the hill. I, you know, I wanted all those things and I got all those things. But it, I don't know if I took that away as a younger, you know, younger boy, an entrepreneur, if I would have had the rigor and diligence and grit to mm. stick with it. So that's one piece. The big problem is the F word, mm. focus. Yep. That's where young people F it all up. Yep is they have this virtue signaling that's now, there's a lot of pressure in millennial world, mm -hmm. in Gen Z world. Well, are you giving back to the penguins? Yep. Are you giving back to, so there's this pressure of like, well, I just wanna create impact. I wanna impact a billion lives. No, you don't. Yep. You want that new Rolls Royce. Right. If people were direct, then they'll, they'll get there faster and then they'll actually be able to help more people. Sure. Instead, people start 20 things at once, ho hoping one's gonna work. Mm -hmm. And then there's virtue signaling inside of that. And it's like, oh yeah, I got a nonprofit. I got this, I got this, I got this. Yep. It's like, dude, bring home the bacon. Right. Like focus on you, like yep. focus on yourself first before you help people. What sure. do they say in a plane? Put the mask over you yep. before helping others. Sure. So that I think is why people run around in desperation because they're lacking oxygen. Mm -hmm. Oxygen is focus. Focus is where all the money is made. Yep. And so I think that's the problem with young entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs in general, whether you're 80 years old and fresh into entrepreneurship, it's the get rich quick yep. mentality. We all know it. It's, it's so easy to fall into that mentality. You see someone you went to high school with, you know, driving a nicer car than you. And you're like, well, I got I to gotta do that. Yep. No, you don't. Never play another man's game. Focus on you. What do you want? Do a calculation at home and say, what kind of car do I want to drive on the daily? What kind of house do I want to live in? Where, what do I want to eat? How many kids do I want to have? Add up all the costs, divide it, that's your goal. Okay, I need a business that is going to sell for $10 million in the next seven years or produce me $10 million yeah. after taxes over the next seven years. And then all of a sudden things become very focused. Break it down to the day. Did I make $20,000 today? Then what am I doing watching Netflix? Right. Then why am I starting a new business? When people face difficulty, mm -hmm they want to switch. Yep. When people face difficulty in a relationship, they cheat or they run away. Mm -hmm. When people face difficulty in a business, they run away. This is the weakest generation yep. in human history. And it's, you know, it's not our fault. Mm -hmm. It's not our fault, but it is the most emotionally weak. Um, and in terms of grit, why? We have everything easy. You can Uber, you can mm -hmm. Uber to this, mm -hmm. you can DoorDash this, you yeah. can GoPuff this, you can, you don't have to leave. You work from home because mm -hmm. you're doing tech support on your laptop that's given to you by the company. Right. This is a different world than, than 20 years ago. Sure. And it is what it is. And after the pandemic, more people want to be entrepreneurs than ever. I saw the, the new business applicants like double, skyrocket. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be responsible for their own destiny now mm -hmm. because they don't trust what just happened. Right. I don't blame them. So what do you do? And I urge everyone out there, just relax. Yeah. If I could tell myself when I was younger, I'm gonna have everything I want, it's all gonna come. Yeah. And to just prioritize myself, my health, 
don't be, you know, don't don't be a d bag, you know, don't be rude and greedy. The irony of getting what you want is to help others get mm -hmm. what they want, and in the process, you get what you want. Right. And that's what I figured out in my life is that if I can help others get what they want, I have to figure out the self alignment. Yep. Selfish, selfish. What do you want? Well, I want to do do do. Okay. Well, here's what I'm trying to get done. Are there synergies? Actually, right. okay. Well then, let's team up and get this done. Yep. And everybody has a different want and need. Mm -hmm. And so I think about it like someone has the secret passcode to a vault. Yep. And the vault has whatever you want in it. And anytime I sit down with someone, I gotta figure out the passcode. Sure. And the passcode is what someone actually wants. Not what they say they want. I wanna love what I do yep. and I wanna be proud of it. Yep. That's part of it, what else? Right. So you can be homeless and love what you do, is that okay? Yep. Or does your family need to have a house? Sure. Where do you want to live? And so when you get down to the nitty gritty of people, not everybody wants money, some want recognition, some want significant, whatever it is. Your job as the entrepreneur is to create an opportunity where others get rich mm -hmm. and you get really rich. Yep. And to create value over and over and over again, that way you build the most lucrative thing you'll have in your career, which is your reputation. Mm. So yeah, I mean, that's the thing, it's, it's just, if people just need to be real with themselves, yeah. that's super important and understand what it is that you yep. need and you want. I understand Maslow's hierarchy of needs, food, shelter, security, but everybody's going for this 1 million, 10 million, 100 mm. million. We have the largest uh, group of e-commerce founders, mm. Powerhouse, and I hear this all the time. I wanna sell for 100 mm. million, I wanna sell for a billion, I wanna sell for 10 million. It's this base 10 thinking that gets mm. us in trouble. What's wrong between 10 and 100 million? Right. I'll take 33 million. Sure. Love that number. A million percent. 48.1, I'll take that. Yep. 21.9, yep. love that number. Those are all great numbers between 10 and 100. You skipped over 90 million. Yep. What happens is that people get stuck here, burnt sure. out, all of this stuff, and then the truth comes out yep. when the push comes to shove. And when things get difficult, that's why people switch. They bounce. Yep. They bounce because it gets difficult. So that that's yeah. really the key for me is like, I, I don't have to be passionate about the business specifically. I need to be passionate about the work that mm. is gonna be required to do this. Right. And I have to fall in love with the abusive labor mm. that comes with being a successful entrepreneur. Yep, I agree 100%. I couldn't agree more. I've, I've started like nine or 10 companies and, and one of the biggest, um, like, and it's not a regret, right? Because I've learned everything that I've learned, but like in, in total agreement with you, you know, I've, I've chased multiple rabbits at one time. And I think there comes a time where you can chase multiple rabbits because you can hire somebody to catch the other one, right? But again, it's a very particular time in that venture where you can say, okay, I have this at a point where I can go there now, right? And you're there. I mean, it, with some of your companies, obviously right. you have multiple companies now, right? right? What would you say like for people watching or listening that maybe aren't there, um, like when is that moment? Like how do, how do you know, right? Like say you're a real estate dude or you're an e-commerce dude or you're an insurance dude or you're a whatever dude, right? There's all it, it, Walmart automation, Amazon automation, like at what point can you pivot? Like at what point is it healthy to say, hey, you know, I, I can pivot now and chase another rabbit. Like, you know, as opposed to just the focus on one thing, you know what I mean? Well, you gotta prove, the best case scenarios is, it's like having, it's like having children, let's say, I'm gonna analogize it. And you have your first child, and if that child is um, trustworthy enough to watch over the other child, the next one, then it gives you a little bit of room. AKA, if you have your current business able to afford the, your lifestyle, but also help you invest in that next thing, that means that it's healthy enough and you've done your job well yeah. enough that you have gained permission to the next level of the game, the, mm. the, the upgrade of your character. Sure. And so that's really, really the key. What you don't wanna be is you don't wanna be, for example, the guy on January 1st at the gym, you bought all the best gear in the yeah. world, the best Peloton, yeah. the best everything, and then two weeks later, you're not working out anymore. Sure. So it's, I think that what the best time is, <clears throat> the best thing to do, number one, is like what you're doing, and I always recommend, is to double down. Mm. So if you're in the insurance, you're an insurance agent, how do you double down in your area? Can you buy out your competitors that are down the road from you, buy their book of business? Can you? What can you do to double down there? Because the grass is greener where you water it, sure. but the grass will always look greener on the other side. Yep. And so it's maintaining the fact that, hey, my future grass looks greener than what that can be, let me focus here. And that's a, that's a discipline, it's, it's, it, it's almost like an intervention, yep. you know, it, some, entrepreneurs are so addicted, especially marketers, to shiny object syndrome mm -hmm. because 
There's a difference between being a successful serial entrepreneur, an expert generalist, someone who can apply their skill set to multiple industries, and who has built, I have built multiple hundred yeah. million dollar businesses now. I have that kind of my repertoire, but even still, it's extremely difficult. Sure. It's not, not easy. Every, every new business that I start or get into is a whole education yeah. in and of itself. But I'm, I'm addicted to the joy of achievement. Yeah. I love that, I love the game I'm in. But now I'm at a point where capital is the highest form of leverage, intellectual capital, human capital, and money capital. Mm. So the more uh, leverage you acquire or gain access to as a process of building your business, that can afford you the opportunity. So sure. for example, in my business, um, you know, I, have, I have multiple businesses, and Snow being you know, the centerpiece of that and what I talk about, but these other businesses have uh, operating partners, operating teams, uh, leadership teams, executive teams, they allow me to do what drives the most value to the business, sure. which is solving, uh, solving problems, uh, uh, problems that are future related. Mm -hmm. So um, also bringing money into the business, whether that's fundraising, yeah. partnerships, et cetera, and driving the vision and pivoting, um, and then recruiting, retaining. Sure. So I know my job roles now, and I have to be the best at them because every day I'm fighting as a CEO to keep my job yep. because I've hired extraordinary people to join the team, which is why we have you know million plus per employee metrics is because our team is incredible, but that means I, I'm challenged to constantly be better. So you'll know when it's time to diversify when it makes sense, when you have so much cash coming yep. through from your, from your current business that you can use this cash yep. to lend it out to to um, real estate, to whatever it is, or to start a new division, to start yep. a new category, to acquire your competitor, or this business has afforded you enough notoriety and you have enough leadership inside of there that you can go, like me, I'm working 24 seven all the time, but I'm in physically in the office two days sure. a week for snow. Well, I've worked for that. I've yep. worked very hard to build that infrastructure because I know where I need to optimize for myself um, to drive more business, uh, drive more value for the business. So really, 99% of the time, the answer is no. Yep. If I'm gonna be honest, 99% of the time, you have to say no. Yep. Oh, this thing, oh, this guy's making a lot of money over here. Oh, this, if your business isn't making money and you've been yep. churning at it for years, okay, you know, you might consider this is a dead end yep. and you need invigoration because there's a thing called, um, Naval Ravikant talks about product market founder fit. And it's important, that third piece is important. So product market, but if you're burnt out mm -hmm. or you don't see a future of you regaining energy in this business, well then the opportunity cost is a lot, is very high now. So you should consider selling this mm -hmm. business. Uh, we brought, we um, acquired a, uh, an advisory firm to help our, uh, a lot of our mastermind members sell their businesses um, and some of them acquire their competitors. Sure. But that is an opportunity for people to put some coins in their pocket mm -hmm. Restart, get that burnout out of the, out of uh, filling out of them. Bring home the bacon mm -hmm. for their family. Buy a family home. Put some cash away for the kids, yep. and then say, okay, what do I want to do now? Right. And so, just depending on where you're at, but I would say nine times out of ten, no. And then ninety nine percent of the time, the option is always to double down on what's making money. Mm. Follow the money. Every business looks shiny. Yep. Trash, billion dollar business. Carpet, billion dollar business. Yep. Lights, billion dollar business, yep. everywhere you go. And so what I found is that if you're looking for other things and your business isn't there all the way, that means that you're facing some type of difficulty, you're uncomfortable, yep. and it's easier to quit than it is to sure. double down. Usually that should be a signal to you to look for advisory, look mm. for help, talk to me, watch some YouTube videos, reinvigorate, go to the gym, take a week off, and hit, come back and hit your business and say, how do I 10X this business? Yep. If that's what I need or that's what I want, but the way that I want to do it, which means involving other people and sure. growing my team. So for me, it comes down to, until I have enough leverage, time, mm -hmm. 24 hours a day. So, oh wow, snow is taking eight hours a day, now it's taking two to three hours a day of active time. Mm -hmm. Well then, maybe I have a little bit more time. Well, I'm gonna go double down first inside of snow. And so that process mm -hmm. creates more, more leverage, more leverage, more leverage, more sure. cash, more connections, more resources, more team. So you wanna spend like six to 12 months, if that's your goal, really fine tuning your current engine so that it's a launch pad, but you don't ever wanna mess up the base. Yep. That's where people go wrong, is they've got this cash flowing business, a car wash business, they go, it's boring, but I wanna sell yep. supplements online, CBD, and they go and put all their cash over here. Yep. 
the principle is never work for the same dollar twice. Mm. So if you make money from e-commerce, you don't want to go and take it again and put it over here and work for it all over again. Mm. You put that into a real estate investment trust and sure. let that make money. Let the dollars make money for you once you've produced yep. them in active income. In order to produce more active income by being more passive, you need more active people sure. in the business to do the work for you, which means you need to create uh, more opportunity. You need yep. the ability to pay people market rate and yep. to be able to do those things. So that means you need to level up your business so that it's in a position that it's spitting off cash flow. Yep. And when I, if I go to sleep for a week and I wake up seven days later, the snow business grows. Yep. You need to put yourself in that position no matter how smart your business. One person business, one billion person business. Yep. Both of them can do it. Yep. Once you're in that position where you can you know, take five days off and your business grows, even with VAs, then you might be in a position yep. to say, it's not gonna hurt my current business by me looking elsewhere. Yep. What would you say the number one struggle is in a business, regardless of industry, and I would, I'm sure it's different in every industry, obviously, but if we were to generalize it, that entrepreneurs face when scaling. So it could like, it might be people, it might be, you know, like, uh, what, what would you say it is? Generalities, I would say two things that are pretty similar no matter what industry you're in. Um, one is limiting beliefs, the entrepreneur or founding team themselves, limiting themselves. You only know what you know, you don't know what you don't know. Mm. Wisdom comes from experience, yours and other people's. And s people simply just don't have enough experience to see to think big enough. Mm. And that's been my biggest struggle my whole life, is that I wish I bet on myself and my teams a lot more. I bet all the way, I go yeah. all in, but I wish I would have had even more confidence in mm. myself and my abilities and the team that I had around me. Because what I thought were big lofty goals um, not just money-wise, yep. right? But like the big lofty goals that I had in terms of impact um, should have been changed. So I think that the limiting beliefs is one of the biggest struggles. Yep. One founder wants to go Elon Musk, one founder wants lifestyle business. Yep. So it's it's really about vision. And again, that, that honesty around mm -hmm. the vision. Yep. What do you want, bro? Uh, I want to drive a Bugatti as a daily driver and sure. I want an extra one. Right. Okay, well, we got to make a lot more money than we're making now yeah. to be able to do that. Well, let's challenge the business we're in. Would someone actually pay a 10x multiple for yeah. this? Or are we just building another job for ourselves? Yeah. So that's one piece. The second piece that every business, I believe, the number one challenge that every business has, no matter Fortune 100 or you just started yesterday, relevance. Yep. Relevance is the number one thing. If your brand or you become irrelevant, your business becomes irrelevant, your profits become irrelevant, and your team considers the mission irrelevant yep. at that point. So everyone's chasing relevance. How do we remain relevant? How does Blockbuster remain relevant? How does Netflix yep. remain relevant so they don't become the next Blockbuster? We're all chasing relevance, and that's where influencer marketing helps remain relevant. That's a piece, an area, micro-influencers, you see it everywhere, so it's yep. relevant. Um, so relevance is something that every business I think struggles with as they scale because you take a Facebook ad and try to make it relevant on TikTok and it yep. doesn't work. Yep. You must be relevant to the audience you're trying to serve. Yep. You can serve lots of audiences at once. You have 19 channels running right now for snow and we're relevant to moms, we're relevant to um, our kid consumers with the Frost product, we're relevant to esports players yep. with Rob Gronkowski, like, we're relevant to the beauty consumers, so we're relevant to a lot of consumers but it's a lot of work sure. to be relevant. That's where when people say, my target market's everyone, how are you going to target that mm -hmm. market? Yep. Because that is more important. And so when you have seven billion people in the world, you don't need all of them to be your customer. No. So it's super important to figure out, relevance is the number one thing that will kill any business. Yep. So how do we become super relevant? I'm gonna throw in one third piece, which is people forget the number one goal of a business yep. is to make money. Yep. And it's not to raise a bunch of money, it's not to go public one day, it's not to sell to a strategic, it's to create jobs, value, to create a great product, deliver them to the customers, and most importantly, to deliver shareholder value. Mm -hmm. Even if you own 100% of the business, are you taking home a dividend every month? Yeah. That discipline is important. Even if you're like, oh, I need to put every dollar back in. Okay, here's the deal. If you say this meeting's gonna take an hour, yep. and it's 15, you'll take up the whole hour. Sure. So you gotta challenge yourself, just like when I was in college, I was like, oh, yeah, I graduated in five years, four years, three years. I graduated in two. Yep. Why? Nobody told me I didn't need to do that. I wasn't trying to show off. I wanted to get out of school so I can run my business. Yep. But that's the thing is I, if you pay yourself 20% of the profit every month, 
you will make that 80% sure. worth 120. 100%. Resources don't make you more resourceful. Resourcefulness right. does. Yep. And you always want resourcefulness before resources, which is why it's nice to start. That's why I started Snow in my spare bedroom. It creates a discipline, mm -hmm. and we bootstrapped the first 100 million. I think if I decided to have an ego and say, oh, I'm Josh Snow, and I got all this money, and all these people, I'm gonna start the Snow thing, and I'm gonna put all this money behind it, and hire a team. And I don't think it would be what it is today yeah. where we have that DNA from the very beginning. And also the fact that we attracted such amazing talent and you know, great talent wants to work on big ideas, big mission with people who think big and who can execute. Yep. Otherwise, you're just a guy who cries wolf, you're the vision guy, you have all these ideas. Every time Josh comes in, you don't wanna be that guy. No. You wanna be the guy that says, hey, this is what's gonna make money, which means that we can pay all of our payrolls, which means yep. we can upgrade our business. That ultimate EBITDA, 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 yeah. EBITDA, 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 that third piece is where a lot of people get mixed yeah. up. You want to build your rapport in an EBITDA producing business. Yeah. Unless you're in a hyper example, right? Like you dropped out of Harvard yeah. and you're building a biotech type of thing, sure. right? That's different. Or a SaaS yeah. thing that you're raising money, you got access to capital, that's different. But the best access to capital is paying customers. Yeah. I love that. Well, how important would you say phenomenal people are in any organization? You know, when you look at, you know, scaling anything, right? And having incredible people and putting incredible people in the right places, you know, as a visionary, as an entrepreneur, we all know that it's not about how, I mean, at some point, it's not about how intelligent you are, or how intelligent I am. It's about how intelligent the team is. And um, how important would you say that is? And, and, you know, I see a lot of people that don't focus their energy enough on that, I don't think. It's hard to, it's hard to because it's uncomfortable. I remember when I first got started, I started hiring people on freelancer.com and Odesk, which is now Upwork. I would look at their rate and I'd be like, oh no, I should go for someone at $8 an hour yeah. you know, in the Philippines to save money. And by the way, any, every country I've worked in, phenomenal yeah. workforce, but it was the, the dollar amount and kind of thinking if I have to pay five people now, that was money that was coming to me. Yeah. And now I gotta pay these five people right. and now I'm gonna be struggling. And so that struggle in, in the beginning is difficult with delegation. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, I'll say this, it, you know, uh, phenomenal people are vital, especially to, some, to, to uh, an entrepreneur like me because I'm a macro manager, mm -hmm. high, high expectation, low pressure, that's the way I operate, which means I need exceptional people to yeah. fill the gap. I can get taken advantage of, we can get taken advantage of because there's that big gap yeah. in the middle. But extraordinary people, phenomenal people, you know, they want to they want to work on things that um, you know they can track the impact mm -hmm. in their life, in their community, all kinds of the business world. They want to be a part of something that um, means something to them. Yeah, and it literally can be anything. Cup cupcake shop, it can be anything, mm -hmm. but it means something to them. And I found that my team, a lot of them have a chip on their shoulder, like me. Yep. You know, and it could be literally anything. But that chip on the shoulder provides uh, grit, and it's it's a nice little booster mm. where most people give up on the lap. Yep. They've got that extra boost, yep. and I found that that's important because I cross train every uh, every single person in my company. So every single person is wearing like a minimum of three hats yep. at once, and it's a very calm and 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 sophisticated workforce. Yep. We're not working after five p.m. very much. It's a very very yep. professional workforce. It's snow. So it's not like crazy, they're wearing multiple hats and everyone's screaming at yeah. each other. It's um, a level of professionalism, autonomy, yeah. um, and opportunity. And that's, that is something where someone who's at a point in their life where they wanna join a team where they can really show what they're made of and really see what they're made of, I always envisioned myself like the X-Men and I always thought I was Professor X mm -hmm. and that I could put out a bat signal, so to speak, and that you know these quote unquote mutants, these phenomenal people yep. like myself would show up, and sometimes they they had there are some abrasive edges on them, other times not. They're smooth and ready to go. And for me, um, you know, I'm in the people business. I'm very very invested mm -hmm. in the people, from our customers to our investors to our team members, uh, to our partners, vendors. I'm very invested in that people piece because uh, with the world of the metaverse and digitization, look at what we're doing today. Yep. We're sitting in physical world next to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, not to say, look, I'm on Zoom all the time, I love it. it, there's a hybrid, but nothing beats the phenomenal people in mm -hmm. your organization, but it echoes from the top down. Yeah. 
And so it's very important that if you're out there listening, YouTube it, read some books, the best ones on leadership. Mm. There are books like Multipliers, Leaders Eat Last. Read up on leadership, uh, how to win friends and influence people, understand how to communicate. You know, that is by far the most important skill. What yeah. I do for a living and why I get paid the big bucks, I think, is because of my communication mm. skills. I wasn't born with them. Mm. I was born, I didn't know how to speak. So, like yeah. most babies, wasn't Literally. born with communication skills. Sure. You have to learn them. And those learning of those communication skills paired with being very direct mm. and transparent, radically transparent, that's the mix. Everyone's got a different mix. For me, that's my mix yeah. to try to protect the organization. And once you get a few phenomenal people, they will step up to protect the culture as well. Mm. They will kind of craft that culture as it grows. And you're there to be the leader of that culture, yeah. the coach of that culture. So phenomenal people, you cannot build something big alone. No. You yeah. need dozens of people, even at our efficiency, we should have probably 200 people, yeah. 300, 400 people. We have a fraction of that. Yeah. It's a rare circumstance, but you need a lot of people, which means that if you wanna go big, you wanna go far, and also most importantly, the irony of this is, you go, well, I wanna hire a bunch of people, yeah. but I don't wanna work all day. Right. Like, I'm an entrepreneur, I wanna one day be able to have yeah. a little freedom, you know? Well, the truth is, the more phenomenal people you bring onto the yeah. team, the less work you have to do in terms of Active work. Active work. Yep. Your responsibility skyrockets. Sure. You're like, when you have to solve something yep. that no one else can solve, you better be bright and squirrely, yep. you better be on it, you better be on it. And you better solve it and help solve it, otherwise your team will lose trust in you. Sure. But that becomes the dynamic nucleus yep. of a growing organization, and it's one that can live, grow, thrive without the founding entrepreneur. Yep. I love that. What do you think, and, and, and I, again, there's gonna be a million qualities and a million ways to answer this, so just maybe one characteristic, but what what's one thing that you think makes a, separates a phenomenal leader from an average leader? Well, I would say, I would say uh, emotional intelligence, and that's a big answer mm -hmm. because there's a lot in there. But I, I would say that it's it's beyond the granularity of management. P people are led, projects are managed, mm. products are managed. People are not managed. You mm. can't manage people. I figured that out. You can't manage people. You can do your best to lead them. You can do your best to lead by example. You can do your best to incentivize them. What I found is that um, leaders who have empathy, leaders who have emotional intelligence, are able to, one, recognize burnout, symptoms throughout their team and kind of pull people aside and nurture them, especially their leadership. Um, uh, aligning incentives, mm. so comp structure, understanding, and, and it's not just money. It is not just money. Yep. We got all kinds of, we, uh, in Snow, the whole team is, is challenged at learning a new language. Mm. So it could be a programming language, it can be Spanish, German, French, uh, Italian was a popular one. So I like to gamify things. Yep. So as a leader, I came in and said, guys, this is amazing. Um, you know, this isn't necessarily your job, but as a person, I want to hold you accountable. Yeah. This is pretty cool. Because for me, snow can go to zero, and I don't care about that. I care right. about the people. Because yeah. the next over, we have the reputation, sure. we can go and do it again. And so for me, it's investing in those people and having the emotional intelligence to align incentives to get people excited. And so I'm giving away an immersion test, mm -hmm. uh, immersion school, seven days in any country. So whoever wins that will be able to go to Germany. Yep. All the company pays for everything. They get to go to Germany and get to practice and yep. all of this. Because I think some leaders forget that it's not one third. So eight hours you work, eight hours you sleep, yep. and eight hours you have your personal time. Well, it's really more than that because sleep, you can't really do anything. So half of someone's life is devoted to your idea yep. as the leader. That is a lot of responsibility and I personally feel that I should do my job to make sure that that person is not burning out, that they're getting access to higher value work. That is the principle in our organization. Everybody should always be thinking, how can I move to higher value work? What is the one thing, the one domino? And that may include yep. one thing that we do a lot of is hiring yourself out. So training from the top down on every, on every side of the organization, like a ball, everyone is thinking of how can I get someone to be at 80% good, as, as good as I am today, yep. 
so that I can move to higher value work to the organization. How is higher value work calculated? Either building the brand of what we're building, so does it drive the brand, you know, or is it driving profits yep. um, to, to, to the business so that we can do more of this? It's one of two things. If it's both, it's a total win. Sure. And so that's how everyone in the organization is thinking about driving value for the business. Mm -hmm. And they question, and I question, am I doing enough for the business? Am I doing enough in my role? What's the next path for me? Instead of running on the same treadmill, what's going to come next? And so I think emotional intelligence allows a leader to ask the right questions, to listen. Yep. And when people are properly motivated and genuinely, genuinely understood in terms of what drives them, and you build the course around that, you don't have to do Game much. Over. Yeah. Like you don't, you put the right people there, they're gonna see the opportunity. Sure. They're gonna get it, and they're gonna be like, this is my go. Yeah. And they're gonna run with it. And it's beautiful to mm. see the amazing, phenomenal people blossom in my organizations yeah. simply because I ask the right questions. Yeah. Yeah, you're a phenomenal leader, you know. But but again, it's it's just like you said. I think I think emotional intelligence was the best way you could have possibly answer that, because it's one of those things that um, it, it it basically is an umbrella to everything, you know. Um, it's the concept of of being a chameleon. I mean, being being able to, you know. I heard one time. I think John C. Maxwell said that you know a phenomenal leader leads everybody differently. They don't lead everybody the same way. They lead every each individual person within the organization the way that that person needs to be led. And the only way that you would know that is by having emotional intelligence. Right. Otherwise, you'd never even be aware that that were the case. You know, from the very beginning. So I think that's incredible. What's I guess a, a question that comes to my mind is like, what is obviously you said that you um, use a particular word to abusively. Uh, you you abusive basically labor. abusive labor, right? Um, what would you say like over the years? You know, this is going to be probably a tough one to answer for you, especially a guy like you. But what would you say like one of the biggest challenges that you faced over the course of your entrepreneurial journey? I, and it could even be like something personal, you know, or it could be business. Obviously, it could be either or. Um, but for you, you know, a, per, a challenge that you've in particular faced. Maybe other people have faced it. Maybe they haven't. Two things. One, learning how to ask for help. That's the biggest biggest. Uh, Biggest regret I have, but you just, you know, uh, I, I've learned now, and that's why I become so public with sharing behind the scenes, the good, the bad, the ugly of building snow specifically, um, as a vehicle for me to not necessarily ask for help in terms of like, um, when I say asking for help, you know, uh, I'll figure it out myself. I'll program the website myself, right? Back in the days, I'll, I'll figure it out. And oh, well, that person wants 5,000, no, I can do it. And, yeah. Just that er early days of just not learning how to ask for help and empowering others to empower myself. Mm. That's something that I think takes maturity and time. The second piece, which I think a lot of entrepreneurs can can correlate with, is um, living in the present. Or sorry, uh, yeah, living in the present is the, is, the, is the issue. We live in the future. Mm. So uh, anxiety comes from living in the future. Depression comes from living in the past. Sure. And sometimes you get a, a little mix of that. And so with entrepreneurship, it's, I think, the, one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult sport you can play. Yep. Um, and it's incredibly abusive to the mind, where I said the abusive labor, it's not just a 16 hour yep. days and rain, shine, sick, sick days, what are those? Like, it's not just that abusive labor style. Uh, also getting paid peanuts and yep. just that abusive, that's the American dream, right? Sure. That's the idea that we're gonna travel across the country to come to San Francisco and there's gonna mm -hmm. be gold there, right? But you gotta dig for it. Yep. So that's the piece I would say is, is and I'm still learning, right? So I think it's gonna be a lifelong process mm -hmm. that we hit an accomplishment and it's it was difficult for me, it's getting better and better to celebrate that win. Mm -hmm. No matter how big, how small, and it's all relative. It's sure. all freaking relative. And I was, um, uh, we just released the first episode of my new show that, that I'm on, goingpublic.com. Mm -hmm. And we're taking uh, uh, four companies potentially public on the show. Mm -hmm. It's the first show of its type where you can click to invest. Mm -hmm. So imagine Shark Tank and you see something you like and you want to be a part of it. Wow. You click to invest. So all the info's on goingpublic.com. But that episode came out last week. And uh, and it was a huge, huge accomplishment. But it's it's, it's that living in the future, you mm -hmm. know, just, okay, that was great, but what does it mean next? Yeah. And, what it, and what that does is that it creates a lot of um, 
artificial loneliness. Mm. It creates a lot of artificial, um, uh, maybe not artificial, but loneliness. It's period loneliness, resentment, yeah. uh, frustration. Uh, you know, wanting to give up. Nobody understands me. Just those feelings, right? Even if you are in a relationship, but those moments where you open an email and a client fires you, and you're like, yeah. oh, those moments of loneliness. Um, realizing that nothing is ever as bad as it seems, yeah. nothing's ever as good as it seems, but to celebrate the wins. Sure. We've got we've got one lap around this thing yeah. we call life. That's it. We got yeah. one lap, and we have one body, yeah. one mind. So. It's a race, but it's a marathon. Sure. And I think that that's a piece that I remind myself constantly. And the younger you are in business, not just age, but in business yep. and success, the more, um, the more impatient you are, uh, the harder it is to, oh yeah, we hit $100,000 a day, then we should hit a million dollar yep. a day. Oh, we did this, okay, well we should do this. And it's just that constant, instead of saying, wow. You know, uh, I was thinking about it, you know, it wasn't long ago when I was on the city bus, sure. you know, and and for me, ten bucks in my pocket, I was a millionaire, yeah. right? And it's really important wherever you started, even if you started as a billionaire. But wow, I started not knowing about this. Yeah. Look how much I know about it. I'm getting asked to speak on it. I've got a TV show on it. Like those moments are so so important. They help um, reduce burnout. Yeah. Uh, they help you become a more likable person. Yeah. You know, how's it going? Oh, we're working, I'm stressed. Yeah. Instead of like, I'm so happy. Yeah. Why are you so happy? What happened? Oh, we just won this award. It's a small one, but it's I've been really wanting it. Yeah. That is infectious. Sure. And it's infectious to the team as a leader when you're able to celebrate those wins out loud and say, look at how far we've come. And look, yeah. this next week is gonna be difficult, but look how far we've come last month even. Yeah. Look at being able to do that is important, not just for you as the entrepreneur and the leader, but it's an important practice to replicate throughout the yeah. team because we have this, this thing about busy is good and work, work, work. Yeah. For me, I'm like, work-life balance is important. Yeah. You know, I want, my, I want my players and my team, I want us all to have the stamina yeah. to be able to make it and race through this marathon. So I would say those two things, learning how to ask for help, delegation, yeah. uh, for sure. And then, uh, you know, the second piece, right? Which, you know, for me, those two held me back for so long yep. and they, they impeded me. And as soon as I started to operate out of a mode of abundance and, and maybe it took me, I don't know what it took, yep. but it certainly took a lot of slapping my brain around to say, hey, wait a second, celebrate the small wins, yep. delegate so that you can empower others so that they can empower you. Mm. If you focus on that and you've got a good enough idea, you don't need to reinvent the sun, yep. but you've got something good in the market and you know, you've know you got a great idea and you're willing to roll up your sleeves and, and, and give it a good go, then you'll be able to celebrate those wins. Oh, I got the site live, yep. celebrate it. Oh, I got my first thousand dollars in payout, print it out, put yep. it on your wall. Celebrate those small wins because those are the things that will keep you going. Otherwise, you never know when it'll stop, yeah. right? You might end up on Mars and be like, I'm still not happy. Yeah, 100%. You said on the last time that I interviewed you, you were talking about how, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a visionary, you know, you're an optimist and, and you're constantly, you know, as an optimist, the, the future has to and must be better than the present, hypothetically, otherwise you'd have nothing to work towards. But by default, if the future is better than the present, then to your point, it's, it's, it becomes a catch-22. It becomes a very slippery slope where you've got to really walk the line because on one hand, sure, the future most likely will be better than the present, but I can't wait to put my happiness in the future to be happy now because the moment we achieve the goal in the future, there's immediately another future. There's immediately another goal, right? And I think that probably everybody struggles with that. Like every real entrepreneur, I think, struggles with that. And, and I would imagine you would agree. And I think it's just, it's, a, it's almost a daily battle, I think, you know, where you have to constantly remind yourself, like, oh, wait, hold on a minute, you know, what we just did right there, like, that was actually great, you know what I mean? And, and I don't think that'll ever come naturally to a true entrepreneur. I think it's something that it's a constant battle, you know? And uh, it's something that I've, I've struggled with over the years, you know, just- Everybody struggles with bio. It's even in fitness, you yep. go, oh, I'm worked out, I didn't see the results, I'm gonna give up. It's you, everyone underestimates what they can accomplish in 10 sure. years, right? They overestimated one year. We're gonna double revenue again, yeah. double revenue again. Um, but what are you gonna do in 10 years from now? Yeah. Like what does your life look like 10 years from now? And how are you reverse engineering that? And as the, if you're the breadwinner in your family or you're the leader of your family or the leader of some type of community, 
In my case, I got started uh, in nonprofit early on with our Fleischer Scholars Program here, which is a summer program at, at ASU and universities across the country for underserved students, the underserved student that I was. Mm. And so every summer I get a big dose of grounding of like, wow, I was literally in that chair mm. and like, whoa, it's almost like deja vu, mm. it's crazy. And I go, what am I complaining mm. about again? And like, oh, yeah. there wasn't Wi-Fi on the plane for this thing and like, it really brings things into perspective. Yeah. And the focus should be to optimize for peace. And what mm. does peace mean to you and your family? Sure. And how can you bring home a win for your family the next three years? Mm. And only focus on that. Because $5 million tucked away is half mm. a million dollars a year you never have to work for again. Sure. That is pretty much all you need yeah. to live a really good life in most of the world. Yeah. And so you don't have to set your targets lower but set your targets realistically sure. for what's gonna get you to the next level of life. Yep. But enjoy, and I'm telling myself, right, it's yeah. a daily struggle, enjoy everything. Enjoy yep. the meals that you have, sure. enjoy the car that you drive, enjoy anything that you have and any growth that you have, celebrate it because it'll actually train your brain. It's very toxic to train your brain on what's next. Like, that's yep. not good enough, what's next, what's next? It's way better to feed your mind yeah. these doses of dopamine the positive reinforcement will actually compound yep. and you will start to be able to identify those wins much more quickly. You'll be able to celebrate them, your burnout will reduce, your happiness, you'll be more infectious to be around, your team will be in a better mood. Sure. Help you, first start with yourself and then help your team celebrate the wins. Start by creating a wins channel in your yep. Slack channel. Start by creating a wins text messaging group. Yep. Create a wins channel for your friends in your personal life yep. and start talking about the wins inside of there and celebrate each other create that infectious kind of bit like we've done in our powerhouse community where everybody's copying and celebrating every single win and it just brings more yeah. and more wins and everybody's happier. We still end up winning the same yep. amount, actually more, than if we were to be hard on ourselves yep. and like, no, no, no. It's, we're human, it's yep. life, enjoy it. Yep. We, are, we are very fortunate to be able to create and create opportunity for others mm -hmm. and it should be an enjoyable process. Yep. It should be fun. It shouldn't be this painful, hard process. Yeah. And the truth is, and it's a, it's a contrary thing to say, but m making money should be easy. Yeah, it should if be. it isn't easy, then you need to scale up, yep. so, You know, get your skills higher, learn more, yep. work with different people, change your industry. If you're not making money in the first six months yep. in most businesses, it's, uh, it, which means that you can create opportunity to create yourself freedom, sure. to create more opportunity for others, then you should probably really challenge it. Yep. And I don't care how in love you are with it. I don't care how many friends you've told about mm -hmm. it. Um, that's okay. You have to be yeah. willing to cut ties with people, businesses, partners, friends, groups, yeah. uh, TV shows, podcasts, things that are not conducive to what your three year, five year goal is. Focus on that and make it a goal every week, Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday is the, the wins week. Wins Wednesday. Yeah sit there and think about what are the wins across my companies? What are the wins on my own personal stuff? Force yourself to do it. It sounds a little whatever, but it's, it's, it's true, it's it scientific. It, yeah. it helps you gear your mind to mm -hmm. find more of those wins and those small wins compound into big ones. They do, momentum breeds momentum. We have a good news um, Slack channel. And so when you were saying that, I, it reminded me of that. And, and what, what's really cool about it um, is that I didn't create it. So that's when you know that you know you you are evolving and your team is is becoming spectacular because it was their idea, not mine, right? Um, or at least they're the ones that executed on the idea without me having to ask, you know. And so because um, I've done it both ways actually, and I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs have. You know, I've done I've not intentionally, uh, unintentionally, obviously, but I've built companies where I've looked back and the the environment, the culture is toxic, and it was there wasn't a lot of celebration around the wins, and it was more like, oh, you didn't do that right, you didn't do this right. And, um, and in retrospect, now that I've done it both ways, now I have a, a phenomenal culture, an incredible environment where people are loving each other and supporting and serving. And, and it's always it, better. It, it's, all, it, it's not even a comparison. I mean, it's just night yeah. and day different. I mean, um, it, it really is unbelievable. So I know we've been here for a while. I could be here all day, by the way. So we'll have to eventually do another one of these. But in conclusion, what um, I'm, I'm just curious, like for you, what are the what's the next I don't know, a couple of years look like for you. I mean, in, just in personal life and, and businesses and I impact, I mean, what, what next for you? Obviously you've achieved so much, so I mean. I don't know, I, 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 I love what I'm doing today. I'm mm -hmm. very happy, I've never, I've never felt more complete in my life in that sense. And a lot of that 
is work on myself. A lot of that is challenging my limiting beliefs. It's challenging the way I think of things and value creation and educating myself. And creating the powerhouse community was uh, huge, I think, for, for, for everybody, but for me, selfishly, because it created an accountability community. It created a family. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's unreal. We have uh, over 3,000 entrepreneurs in our free Facebook group and just the stories I hear. So the impact is great on the nonprofit yeah. side of what we're doing in, um, with the underserved students throughout the uh, country with the Fleischer Scholars Program. Uh, our powerhouse uh, community um, and what we're doing there to empower entrepreneurs um, to create more value. I found yeah. the multiplier there. If I can help more leaders become better leaders, that there's a trickle down effect. And yeah. you know, so I love that. Same thing with the other side, the underserved students coming into the business world. Um, and then in the center are all of my activities, businesses and investments, mm -hmm. Snow included. And uh, I feel like we're just scratching the surface, but I think on a personal level, uh, I love I love investing mm -hmm. time, uh, resources, connections, money into other people and mm -hmm. other ideas. And I hope that, you know, three, four, five years from now and beyond, I will just have more access to capital um, so that I can give it away, mm. so that I can invest it into other entrepreneurs and great ideas. Um, and building something like a snow uh, takes a lot, right? You know, as solo founder, fund, self-funded, bootstrapped a hundred million dollars, and it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, no matter what business you're in, what you sell, building something to scale like that in a short amount of time is a lot. Yeah. And now we're at a place where I don't have to do that anymore and we have a phenomenal team and great partners and all this stuff. Um, I, love, I love the business and I love the businesses that we're in. I love the sport. Yeah. This is my sport and I hope to be uh, anything like the Tom Brady mm -hmm. in, this, in this space um, and put a couple more rings on my finger, but most importantly, put some more rings on my team's fingers. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got, I've got a couple rings and they're amazing. Yeah. Um, but I want to see more people win. That's awesome, man. Well, I absolutely love it. I think that you're truly a true visionary. You're an, a truly incredible leader, an incredible entrepreneur, somebody that is going to do obviously massive things. Guys, if you don't follow Josh Snow, um, all of his information will obviously be in the description down below. So definitely go check him out. Um, check out some of his products and things like that. Check out the new show. Um, you said the new show. Where can people find that? Goingpublic.com okay. and entrepreneur.com. Okay, I love that. I think I actually just read an article on that right before we hopped on. Um, I absolutely love it. I appreciate you being here. Um, any final thoughts on your end or, or just if not, we'll go ahead and wrap up. I know we've been here for a while. This is, I've never seen uh, energy like I see today in the entrepreneurial world and the metaverse and people wanting to get their, their hands into entrepreneurship. It's an exciting time to be alive with change comes opportunity. Uh, the pandemic has created one every hundred years. Mm. We're living one right now. Yep. So make sure that you drown out the noise and listen for the signals mm. because the largest wealth creation, or the wealth creation and wealth transfer events are happening right now yep. and over the next few years. And so you only need to have one fishing line in there mm. and make sure you're ready to yep. tug and pull um, when it comes about. So best of luck to everyone and entrepreneurship again, it's a marathon, you're racing a marathon. Yep. And uh, feel free to reach out anytime. Yep. I'm Josh Snow on Instagram. I like to you know, read through the messages and uh, I love to hear from entrepreneurs all over the world. So it's, it's a great time to be alive. Yep. It's a, I, I can't imagine five years from now what you know, you're gonna be into, what I'll be into. And like, yep. there's just so much going on in the world right now. And uh, you know, I'm even getting shiny object yeah. syndrome. <laughs> but staying focused yep. is key. And uh, you know, I, I would say take advantage of uh, the right opportunities that make sure. sense in front of you. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy I love it. that. I appreciate you being here, Josh. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, smash the like button, leave a review, follow Josh, and uh, can't wait for the next time. Thanks, yeah. brother. I appreciate it.